Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dan Blondell of Nano One Materials. How are you today, Dan? I'm very good, Tracy. Thank you very much for having me on your show. And of course, I'd like to start by congratulating you on the grant for the manufacturing no. of lithium battery components. This seemed very exciting to us. Dr. Duchesne uh, called me about it, actually. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, it's uh, the, the, this funding uh, investment from the Canadian government comes from a branch of the automotive sector called the Automotive Supply and Innovation Program. And it's a $1.9 million uh, 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 financing or, or, I guess, investment in the company uh, towards our pilot production facility. And actually, it, uh, it adds to an, another grant that we got earlier this year from Sustainable Development Technology Canada for another $2 million. And then furthermore, we had a grant from, uh, uh, from IRAP for about a uh, quarter of a million dollars. So it's been a very good year on the, uh, on the financing front from the government. Incredible support. Is this true? I, I read actually on, our, on Investor Intel that uh, this technology may actually reduce costs by up to 50%. Is that correct? Yes, and I, maybe I should explain a little bit where that number comes from. But, uh, first of all, you need to understand the cathode material, so one side of the battery, uh, the cathode materials represent about 25% of the cost of a battery cell. And so we're targeting cost reductions for the cathode materials themselves. And when we look at, uh, at cost reductions, we're looking both at the manufacturing, the cost end of things. So that's materials coming in and the processing. And we're also looking at improving the energy storage capacity of the materials over its lifetime. So that 50% represents uh, lower cost raw materials coming in. Um, uh, simpler, easier uh, manufacturing with fewer steps and a, uh, and a, and a basically a, a higher capacity materials and enabling materials that could become the, uh, the next future batteries as well. So of course in addition to these grants we've been talking about battery materials in general and how expensive they are. For instance the cobalt that's needed uh, often come from conflict areas. Can you tell us a little bit more about how Nano One might be alleviating the economic pressure on suppliers? Okay, well, uh, the first thing is that we have a, our, our technology is a processing platform, so we can make many different materials. So we can make the, 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 the nickel, manganese, cobalt, or the lithium iron phosphate materials, but we've also been developing a cobalt-free material, which consists of nickel and manganese alone. And it's high voltage, it's in the five volt range. It's something that the, uh, the big battery players in the world are looking for. They see that on their future roadmap and we, uh, we're actively discussing five volt batteries with, uh, uh, with some of the biggest players in the world right now. The, uh, the ability to, use, to, to eliminate cobalt does two things. It eliminates the supply chain risk because cobalt is mostly single sourced um, from, from one part of the world. And, and also, uh, of course, if it can alleviate the, uh, uh, the supply chain risk, it can also start to address um, some of the, uh, the conflict metal uh, um, uh, topics that, uh, that you just brought up as well. And of course, Dan, you, had, you and your team at Nano One have been doing this for quite some time. Uh, I'd like for you just to back us up and give us an overview. Yeah, I think the, the easiest way to describe this, it's, it's, a, it's a manufacturing process. It's a way of assembling lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt into a cathode material. And we have a way of doing it that eliminates crushing, grinding, milling. It allows us to use lower cost. Uh, lithium going into the product. So we're using lithium carbonate, which reduces the, the, the feedstock costs. And we're using a much simpler methodology uh, that allows us to provide uh, materials uh, into the cathode space at a, uh, with, with a simpler, cheaper manufacturing costs. Uh, at the same time, we're able to get a, uh, a better structured material where the atoms are more intimately mixed and form the kind of structures that hold energy more efficiently. And of course, everybody's trying to get involved in this sector. And you've been here in the business uh, for quite some time. So can you tell us a little bit more about the overall battery storage sector? I'd just love to know if you agree that the estimates we're hearing right now are conservative, or do you think they're, they're overstated? Do you I'm sure you have an opinion, Dan. 
I definitely have an opinion. I think that they are cautious at this point right now. I think in the past, uh, they were definitely overstated. Uh, we went through a bit of a lull two years ago. It's come back. And uh, in my recent visit to, to Asia, China and Japan, uh, it's going gangbusters over there. There's a tremendous amount of, of factories coming online and there's demand uh, being created at the consumer level. Uh, and I expect that we'll see that spill over here uh, in none time soon. And, of course, you just brought up your trip to Japan and China. You recently announced in November that you had this very interesting business development trip. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, it was, a, it was really a two-phase trip. I, I had planned to go over there with our advisor, Joe Lowry, to explore some of the, the people that, uh, that he knows over there, both in the battery space and in the lithium space. So we had some very productive meetings with them over there, discussing ways to collaborate. And we, uh, I also went over on the back of a uh, sort of a pitch, uh, pitch Canada, pitch China event that I won. And I was toured around a bunch of different economic zones in Chongqing and Nanjing and Taizhou. And we talked to government officials and, and a bunch of companies in the, in the electric vehicle, battery and cathode space. And there's definitely a, a will to participate and find a way to collaborate over there. So we're just working through a lot of details right now. These things take time. And uh, we expect to, uh, to be talking to them into the new year. So, Dan, what should we as shareholders or uh, interested shareholders expect in the next couple of quarters? Uh, well, it's a very good question, Tracy. Everyone, uh, everyone wants to know what the next big catalyst is. And uh, there's no doubt it's about strategic engagement. And that's, uh, that's what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm out there talking to the players that, uh, that we are seeking to be potential partners. We have active discussions going on. We have some interesting proposals on the table. And uh, we're actively trying to get that in place to, be, uh, to come online with the with the pilot uh, early in 2017 so that's uh, that is really what i'm trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis i think the, the investors can also expect more patents coming from us we have three patents already issued and uh, we have a number more in the pipe and, uh, that have been applied for and there'll be announcements about more technology uh, coming into the new year i'm very excited about some of the things that are developing here at nano one so dan thank you so much for joining us today i really appreciate it tracy thank you for the opportunity 